Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and this is the second episode of Build Like Me, With Me, whatever series you want to call it. On the last episode we went through some hotkeys and very quickly how cinematic camera works. And today I figured we could go through a little bit of uh, foundations, stairs, maybe some terrain tooling. Uh, we're a rather small lot right now so we're Pretty limited for terrain dueling, but we can try a little bit of something, possibly. And we are at the, well, relatively beautiful Riddle Rose lot here. And I was thinking that we could start with the fact that when you choose the foundation here, you can choose what the foundation looks like. And it always covers one room at a time. One room at a time, unless you press a shift and you can choose one wall at a time. And we went through these buttons before, so you know already where your shift is going to be. Okay. And you have two of them on your keyboard, so you can choose whichever is more comfortable for you. I don't think we need to change this foundation per se, but what we could do is to... Well, the slider used to be here, didn't it? We used to have a slider on this menu here that let us go up and down on this build. Let the foundation go up and down. What we need to do now is to actually click on the... Well, we can even just click on the flipping house. Like, not, not the roof, because the roof chooses the roof. But if we go underneath here, you can see this. And uh, this is what's making the house go high and low. You can even make it go underneath if you wanted to. But we don't need to change it that much. We can put it a little bit lower than it was. I, I'm not a fan of really tall foundations myself. The stairs get really expensive for the build on that point if you make them more taller. You know, like some townhouses might be really, really tall and you can see here pretty soon that the stairs are turning yellow. I'm pointing it with my finger, but I should probably put like a arrow or circle or something around it. You can see the stairs turn yellow, which means that they will be deleted when the lot is too high. It doesn't have enough space here to have the stairs go in from this point here. You see, like it doesn't even recognize which way it would need to go because it doesn't have the space to do it. So what we can do is to control C, uh, control set, not C, and we can go back to the original length so we don't lose the stairs. And we can see how high we can actually go with this. Quite high. In my opinion, I think this is like very, very close to the highest that we can go. Because you need to look at this space here. right here to know how high you can have the lot on but as i said i like a little bit lower lots so we are gonna be keeping it like with a two step stairs i think also what is a really cool thing is that you can make a sunken area in your house this is something that multiple people have had tutorials on so I'm gonna go through it very very easy and simply nothing really fancy or whatever you can either use a wall tool with a B or we can go into fences and with the fences you have this replace fences tool which actually goes and replaces your walls if you click on those as well and on that point if you don't have move objects on you will lose your windows so what I'm going to do right now is to go and put my move objects cheat on because I'm the type who just likes to build with that and it makes the biggest difference because if I accidentally will click here with the fence it doesn't lose the windows, it doesn't lose the curtains, it doesn't lose the paintings, whatever is on the walls. So I can just control Z and everything is back to normal. I don't need to panic off any of that. So if I want to make, let's say, a sunken kitchen area that they have here, 
I could technically what I would personally do see this is why I don't use regular speed builds anymore because I'm always turning and t twisting the camera like a madman so what I'm gonna do here is to just choose any random fence right now and then I'm gonna go into the place fences by drawing which means that I can now freely put it down anywhere I want and make it into a shape that I want okay and then control C again, and we are losing one step at a time. What I want to do here possibly is to pull it through here, all the way through here. And then you can see that with the crit on, this carpet is not inside this area where I'm not planning to sunk in. Then we are going to put another piece of fence over there. And now what we can do is to remove the floor here. However, with the move objects on, as you can see, the problem is that everything is floating. So what we can do is to control zero, control zero, and again, every single piece we can do like this, or we're just gonna remove it all then remove the floor and be like, now we have a cross on the flipping house. What can we do about this? Well, first we are gonna try to get some light into this house because it's a relatively dark house. I don't like it. So there we go. And on this point, because you have done this, there is a chance that the floor, because we went to mess with the foundations that the Terrain tool is a little bit wonky and we need this flattened terrain option. We are going to put a G on and we will see what it actually looks like right now. And it does seem like it's not flat. We could also just flatten to height. So we could just do this for all around the house. So we can be sure that there is a flattened floor inside here. Now what we can do is to choose another foundation. We can put like this in here. Uh, actually, let's put it on the all around inside. But then what happens is this. So we need to actually have this foundation around the whole house, if you so wish. Some people are not fussed about it. I am a little fussed about it. I'm going to look around everywhere and just replace the foundation everywhere. And yeah, sure. It doesn't look as fancy as a traditional house stuff now, but it makes it look more sane inside. I'm not going to be fussing about the wall colors or anything like that. So I'm just going to pick any, any flooring and I need to now track it through the floor like so. And now whatever fencing you have, you need to at least have a one spot off and another spot off. So you can have a stairs leading down to it. And you can use this copy to aim it onto the both sides. And what this means is now your same should be able to go from the front door to the kitchen, living room and to the bedrooms and the toilet. No problem whatsoever. Personally, I'm not really fan of this but i i guess i chose the wrong lot to show you all this but you get the gist of it right right so now we would need to put on the new counters and make this kitchen look like fabulous right so we are just gonna bump any old counters and things in here and at this point i would actually think about where the stove is going to be. Stove is going to be here, right? So we have now... Actually, what I would do is probably throw this into the corner, that one over there. And then, of course, every kitchen needs a sink. So I'm going to throw a sink over there. And now, technically, the kitchen is done. We have everything what we need. We even have some fabulous paintings on very high on the wall. We could have a table. Because kitchen needs one square 
to work. Stove needs a one square so the sim can stand there. And fridge needs the two squares right like so. So we even have a space for dining table. We have a spot for a dining table. So we are going to be throwing a dining table right here. And with a plus or a minus, while you have the item chosen, you can go through the colors, what, the what, whatever they come with. And that's pretty cool if you ask me. So there we go. And now we have these here. And technically this is the all the area that the dining table area needs is two times three. I could put a small plant possibly like no that's a pretty big plant actually i'm gonna take a smaller plant like with the one of the fourth size plant and i could put it here and i could drag it in any corner i like because these just won't be floating around or anything if you put a bigger one and you try to drag it closer it you know it clips out and tries to go to the top of top of the area so that's why I prefer the smaller smaller plants. And thus, so you can have, you know, decorative item there. Or in my case, I would even consider putting a bin. Because bins take very small space as well. So every house needs a bin. To some extent, anyway. And this is the perfect spot that we could put a plant on. To fill it in. Or... Maybe even a some sort of a table counter thing. Like the chairs need the one in front of it to work. So it's either one or the other. We can't have them both there. But we can have this right on here. And then we can add... No, that's a big one. That's a big one. We need a small one. Where's the one I usually use? This one as an example. And we can put it like so, like so, and it's there, decorative, very pretty. And we can even consider, does any of these go on top of this? No, of course not. Why would they? I would just make things too easy, right? So we can put, like, candles on there. Yay! So pretty now, okay. And I like to have these, like, uh, random empty spots for the sims, so... One goes down, one can stand here and not block each other's way or break things out. Because you do need to keep an eye on how big the items are. Every item needs a little bit of extra space around it for it to work. There is a chance that no one wants to sit on this chair as frantically as they will be sitting on these three. But it is possible. Okay? Even in an area like this, they wouldn't have a problem to sit in this chair. Now, with the alt, I'm gonna snuck it into the corner again. And we can even pull the table a little bit outside the wall, unless we want it to be hugging the wall like that, the foundation. We can drag it a little bit further away, as long as we keep maturity of this square here open. In bedroom, for example, here, if we look at this from the upper view like this, um, first of all, this chair, can be pushed all the way into the corner like so. There's more space here to go around for the same to get to the bed. And everything else is pretty fine. Let's take a look at the other kit, uh, bedroom. It's a single. We have a random shoe rack here which could be pushed a little bit closer there. We have this ugly, ugly, ugly bookcase. Well, this is another thing, like, I would not put a bed right next to the door. That That's just me, but I, I could probably shove it in there. Put this in here. And then make so, like, decorative item could be even in the corner, like so. Like, a little bit, like, shoved in, like, forgotten. Because this makes more sense to me. But then I would definitely pull this chair out of the corner a little bit, like so. And there would be a perfect spot for anything here. I don't know, like a flower thingy or maybe a microphone or you could even put a easel in there. 
And you need to think about the treasure again. The sim needs to stand in the next square here when she's working or changing clothes or whatever. So you need to think like, okay, so this square is already fine and the door needs one. So, you know, it's going to be working and it's fine over here. Once you get used to what size all the items are, it's going to be easy peasy. And to relate to this, I will be talking about blueprints. If you find them online, how to translate into game, for example. So I will talk about that on some later point. Um, stairs, you can copy them with this, you can turn them with this, or you can see the rotate buttons over there. However, for me, they're the dot and whatever the other half function functionation it is. And this is to move it, which will remove it from the original spot completely. Which means that these I could not have placed here with a copy tool. Because this is a three levels and that doesn't fit in there. There's just absolutely no way to make it work in there. So I had to manually go and choose the stairs from here to put them here. Okay. What I find most important is to make sure that the lot is balanced. It's not bumpy and weird looking and everything is working as intended. Like for example, if you're doing landscaping, this is not quite what I like to see in the builds. Like this kind of a like <laughs> floating per uh, flowers or whatever. Um, what Maxis didn't do is to change it so that the shrubs and bushes and whatever, that they follow the terrain. They just left them frantically just stiff to the stick and said, good luck, have fun with that. So what we need to do, if we do put a little bit of a hill here like so, and we can see this floating a little bit. So we can choose with an E another one of these. Put another one next to it and so there it looks like it's not floating as bad anymore we put another one we rotate it a little bit and then we just keep on going until we're happy and get to the balanced area where nothing is floating in the air anymore i'll show you like so you know what i mean because you can see that it is floating but it's not as frantic looking if you just put it hanging in the air here. I just don't appreciate these. Like the terrain tools, the way how they made them are making landscaping to a super hard work. So just, you know, that's why I use the hotkeys a lot. That's why I'm just, you know, having move objects on because I know that with that the job is going just so much faster. And I don't need to panic that it, it's just going to take me so long. Because it does take me long. The difficult part is to choose what you want to put in there. Because not everything goes with everything. I'm just choosing random things right now, but you know what I mean. They just don't go together. If you look at the build how it is, it's not, you know, not quite the landscaping you would go for, right? We would need to change the living room setting a little bit because this is not ideal. However, it's not impossible to work with. I would possibly do something stupid like this and even change this into a dresser, most likely. But what we have is now this. So now they have more space. They don't get stuck into this one corner piece here. And this is a another item that always locks itself into furthest possible corner. Well, it can actually be very close into a corner there. And then, of course, to be a little bit less dramatic looking, we can choose the replace fences and we can choose, I don't know, let's choose something funny. Like, let's choose these fences. Funny. Oh, that's hideous. Okay, let's not do that. Let's choose these instead. Not as bad, not as bad. So we can now easily change whatever fence we want to try on instead, rather than drawing it here, like so. 
but we can just there we go okay and go towards E again let's return to whatever was the cutest one i guess that one a little bit like uh, decorative items i'm just gonna go through really quickly um we can if you wanted to put something on the table you can choose let's say we want this picture on here we can press m letter to make it show us all the slots that's possible to put stuff on now it's there so we can just turn it over there or now that we have placed it there, we can move the table a little bit off. We can put the grid on, so we have a little bit of a guidance what's going on. And we can just, you know, place it a little bit off from the grid area. And that was done with the alt. This is done with the alt, this turning, rotating thing, yeah? And if you want to put another picture in there, you can just plop it on the table. You can drag it next to this picture whatever angle you want to and now there's apple and pear on the table for you to enjoy and watch while you're having your morning cereal i don't know whatever so that's what i wanted to go through a little bit and simply today and if you have any questions pop them down below i can try to fit them into the next episode or something so we will continue from here at the rindle rose on the next episode however this area is absolutely hideous. I can't believe I came to do this on such a small lot. Just ignore me. Ign ignore the whatever I destroyed here. So <laughs> try to do it better. Okay? See you later. Bye-bye.